All right, so I know I said that uh, I had chosen to go with the M76. Put this down. The M76 bolt carrier uh, because it had a little bit extra weight and I liked the scallop cuts and things like that. But I noticed something or ran into an issue when I tried to install this in my uh, Romanian built PSL. Uh, Oh, so you know, I have a factory built Romanian PSL, and this one is different. This is a heavy barrel that I'm making from a kit, obviously. So I was like, well, let me put this into the Romanian made PSL and see how it looks and how it rides on the rails and things like that, because it'd be fairly close representation since I'm using a Romanian made receiver for this build. Well, I found out that as is this will not work in a PSL the reason being is this let's see if I can get it to focus on it for you uh, there we go this rail here this bottom portion is too long on both sides this little this bottom rail portion right here is too long when you see it compared to the Romanian this is much shorter on both sides Let's see if I can get them both in here So, this carrier isn't able to fit into the receiver at all to even try it because of this. Now, I could very easily just cut this off and blend it, uh, blend it to the carrier body on this portion, same on that side, and then it should work fine. Or I could open the receiver rails up to accept this. The only issue with doing that is if I do that, I have a much higher chance of a PSL carrier jumping the rails. And jumping the rails is when you pull the bolt carrier to the rear, like charging it or firing, instead of it going back and sliding home, it'll go back and get stuck because the back end here on the carrier has popped out of that out of the rails that guide it and now it's stuck up there and it can't move so that's a pain in the ass and I really don't want to deal with that so I think I'm still gonna go with the M76 carrier but I am going to cut the uh, rail here on the bolt carrier to fit the PSL receiver also a benefit to that is I'm ensuring that this is such a close fit to those rails that it jumping the carrier or jumping the rail, sorry, is going to be slim to none. It could still happen, but much less of a chance with it being closely fit to it. So just thought I would point that out in case anyone is following this thinking, oh, I want to do that too. You have to keep that in mind. But since we are still going to go with this, we are going to go ahead and, and install our PSL gas piston that we modified into this carrier. So I've already uh, deburred these and chased the threads on the carrier uh, with a carrier tap and I cleaned off the threads on the piston itself so we're just going to install this and I lucked out because the holes for the piston match the holes in this carrier very well with it being screwed down very close to the end of the carrier. On a lot of them, 
especially on the on these Yugo slash Serbian, however you want to call it, uh, types. And we need to focus again. I've found that many times they'll line up with the piston un with that much of a gap between the piston base and the end of the carrier. And there's nothing wrong with it. It still functions just fine so long as it fitted to the gas block. It's just I don't I think it looks a little unsightly and I always prefer it to be closer in, especially if I have a virgin piston that I drill myself, I'll always make sure. Oops. That I have it screwed in all the way. All the way against the uh, bolt carrier and then I'll back it off half a turn or one turn and in this case it only it just backs off a half a turn and you still have the wobble I don't know if you can hear that but there's wobble in the piston now for those of you who don't know or wondered about that that wobble is good it's supposed to be in the it's supposed to be there because, as I said previously, the gas tube is not really a gas tube at all. It is a piston guide. It's meant to guide the head of the piston into the gas block. So, with AKs, as I'm sure they're, as everyone knows, they're notorious for. You can get quite a, a bit of canting of the components on the barrel. So, the rear sight block may not be complete may not be uh, perfectly aligned on the barrel between the front trunnion ears and then the gas block is on and that may not be aligned with the uh, rear sight block front sight blocks not aligned with the gas block or that and so that's where you get these you can get problems with the piston going back into the gas block this wobble coupled with the guiding of the gas tube allows for that just a slight bit of misalignment for it to still go in go into battery without uh dragging heavily on the gas tube walls or in even in the rear sight block if it's that badly canted now if the it's so badly canted here and actually one second let me get this one there's a little stub here if it's so badly canted as you can see, hopefully see here uh, this is really hard using a monitor that's reverse here there's really not much space for this to deviate in here but some of them they'll be canted over so much that it's grinding against the side of the uh, rear sight block so it comes back and it grinds up against that too. That translates to typically lots of grinding of the piston in the uh, gas tube because if the rear sight block is misaligned that heavily, the gas tube attaches to that. So that will throw that out of alignment and that'll skewer the gas tube. So this is rubbing extremely heavily. And typically you can see that when you move, remove your gas piston, it'll have one side that's really rubbing and really worn as opposed to the rest of it. So this wobble is good. And so I have the holes lined up. And what we're going to do is and rivet this piston to the carrier. Now again, this is on, other people have done YouTube videos of this, although it's a lot of the ones I found are kind of old. So we're gonna go ahead and do it. So I've cleaned out these holes. Now a lot of US made uh, piston rivets I've noticed are oversized. So you can reduce the size of the piston rivet, but it's kind of a pain to hold on to to do. So I just slightly open up these holes. It takes almost nothing to do. And then you'll notice that the 
rivet will go pass through the carrier, through the uh, piston itself, and out the other side. One side of it is already flared. Let's see if we can pull this up here. Maybe not. There we go. One side of it is already flared out. The other side is not. So what we're going to do is rest this side against a hard surface, or in this case, the anvil of the um, vise, and then we're going to peen this surface over. And then we'll flip it around and do the other side, peen the edges, and keep doing that until it's as flat as we can get it uh, to the surface of the bolt carrier. And then from there, we'll grind each side so that it's blended in with the bolt carrier and it's a seamless finish. Okay, so what I do, place it here. Oh, drop my hammer. Place it on the anvil of the vise. Got it. Make sure it's in there. Then, oh, sorry about that. Drop something, had to stop and pick it up. Okay, so we have it flat against that side using a not heavy, but not super light uh, ball peen hammer. Just start. Now, this rivet looks like it may be a bit short. Yeah, you can see here, uh, this side it's working fine. You can see it's peening over against the surface, but the rivet was a bit short. So it's peening, but you can see this gap over here. And while it com it's only cosmetic, this would hold just fine. Once I'm done uh, peening this in a little bit more, uh, that kind of bugs me <laughs> so I will probably just drill this out and use a different one uh, it this was this rivet was from CNC warrior I think and they do run a little bit shorter I found than the ones from AK builder so I only used it because it was already silver in color and I don't plan on refinishing this carrier but even if you use the ones from AK builder that are blued or black oxide they're still going to be silver by the time you file them and polish them out. But I figured, well, that was the odd one out, so I might as well use it. But it looks like I may have to uh, drill this out and redo it. So we'll do that real quick. Okay, so replaced it with an AK Builder one. And uh, as we can see, hopefully... That looks uh, much better. Covered the hole so when we blend this in, it should uh, be fairly seamless and look really good. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is uh, something that happened with this one is uh, once you peen this down, sometimes bending that wobble I was talking about will go away like it did with this one. The wobble's gone. Um, I found that after shooting uh, the first, after shooting like a mag or two, it will come back. If it doesn't, which that has happened to me too sometimes, um, it's okay 
it's not going to hurt anything, especially since we're the, if you're the one building it, you're the one ensuring that the gas block and the rear sight block and everything is aligned well enough to where it shouldn't cause you any issue. Um, but it still is preferred to have some wobble in there. But what are you going to do? Beggars can't be choosers. And, uh, well, I guess in this case, if you're building it, you kind of can, but I'm not taking that apart, drilling it out. Oops, just dropped one of my aluminum jaws. Uh, I'm not drilling that out again and redoing it because since I'll be setting the gas block, I know it's going to be straight uh, and that it, it won't be really necessary. But something to keep in mind if you have a gun you didn't build and you're swapping out the piston for whatever reason, uh, 922R compliance or... Um, it's just corroded to hell and you want to put a newer one on there or whatever the reason so all right so we'll blend this in and i'll get back to you when that's done all right so got the uh rivet in place like you saw in the last clip uh so now to dress it down all we're gonna do is take our file here this is a little pillar file that i've got um uh, and just start rolling it um, just rolling it as we go across it now at some point I'm gonna put this in the vise it just makes it easier to hold but you just keep doing that and you can already see that it's Uh, dressing over just fine same with the other side and we'll just keep doing that until it comes flush with the surface of the uh, carrier and then I'll probably go over it with some uh, sandpaper or something just to blend it in and when we're done, it should be a pretty seamless, uh, pretty seamless job. Uh, you more than likely will see a small circle where the rivet head was and stuff. But I mean, all of them are like that. Very few of them can you not tell at all where the rivet is. So keep doing that and then we'll show the uh, finished product. All right. And there we go. You can see it's pretty seamless can't really tell where the rivets were so we just filed it down uh, flush with the carrier and then used some progressively finer uh, cloth back abrasive so just you know I use these uh, strips of sand pit cloth back sandpaper that you can get at a Harbor Freight works really well not too expensive and so that is it. I think I finally, you know, side note, I think I finally figured out my focus issue. I had it set, I guess automatically it comes set to detect faces. And so that's what it kept doing. It kept like looking for a face to focus on. So I turned that off and just put it to a general area. So it seems like that it's not hunting around much anymore. So hopefully we got that fixed. All right, so next thing we're going to do is fit the handguards and get to work on making the uh, front handguard cap. So I'll see you in a bit.